Hello, 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 everybody. My name is Dr. Moni Yadioye. I want to appreciate you for watching Ogongo TV. I believe you are enjoying our fantastic movies, Medical Tips on Ogongo TV. Today, I want to introduce you to a wonderful program tagged One on One with a Champion. On this program, you have the opportunity of meeting great people, people who have wealth of experience that you can tap from. Do you know that courage is the backbone of the champions? Please, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I love you. One with a great champion We told you only a song You will be blessed, you will be inspired And you stand to be a great champion I'm a blessing I'm a blessing to generation I've been given the power I've been given the power to I'm not a savage. I am a king, I'm not a savage. Well, I stand to reign. I stand to reign. Be a great champion. I'm a blessing to today. Hello, viewers. Welcome to this episode of One on One with Champions. My name is Esson Yekunle. And today, I have a special guest of honor. She is a mother, she has been in the ministry. Of music for over 40 years. You want to guess who my guest is? She's no other person than. Okay, let's go and meet my guest. I give you glory, Lord, and I worship you. I give you glory, Lord. Yes, I worship you. You are wonderful. And you are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Father, we give you all the glory for yet another day in the land of the living. Hello there, my name is Tom Showeto. Evangelist Tom Showeto from Ibada. God bless you. Life has been so good to me. God has been so good to me. Even at the initial stage, it was a little bit rough but and tough. But ever since I got to know the Lord, it's been so good. I didn't plan it. I didn't study for it. But I got called into it. I was alimo to Shadia before. And I attended a church program in 1974, a revival service. And the choir of the church sang, It Touched Me. That was a special number. He touched me, oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened and now I know. He touched, God touched me that day. And I started weeping. Something, I had an encounter which I can never forget. I had an encounter that day. And that same day, the Lord touched my life. I gave my life to Christ and I joined the choir. After joining the choir, I became a member for 16 solid years. I sang at Orita Mepha Baptist Church for 16 solid years. After that, the Lord called me out to go and evangelize the world with this same music. It was not easy. It was not easy. In fact, I was thrown out of the house because since you cannot pray the Muslim way again, I was always saying, praise the Lord, Jesus, and I want to pray in my own way. But I was thrown out. And so a couple in the church took me in as a sister. And I lived with them for almost five years. I got married in their house. Although we are reconciled later because my mother and Elijah became born again too. My sisters, they were born again too. And I thank God because the Lord has used me as light. The Bible says the people that sat in darkness, they have seen the light. 
So the light in me reflected upon their lives and they came to know the Lord. Manpower, material, recognition. One thing with me is that I'm not after fame. I go a step at a time. And when you are following the God who called you, definitely it takes you to places. And uh, the, at the initial step, to get people who share the same vision with you, to get people staying with you alongside what God has called you to do, it was a little bit difficult. But at a particular time, when God said, I didn't call you to go and start a band or a group, a singing group, just start a ministry. So the ministry started on the word, and I had to really teach the people the word in the music. We don't just go out to go and sing, but we are singing the word. So we are living the life of a minister, not a, just a singer, ministers. So I, I, another problem I could say we're having were instruments, but I thank God people who came into to believe in the God that I serve and what I am doing, they partner with us and God has been so faithful. I cannot remember challenges, but I, I can remember goodness and mercies of the Lord. Mm, there, there are not many, not much challenges that I face in this music ministry. God has been faithful. As long because he gave me a scripture in Isaiah chapter 1, but it says, if you're willing and obedient, I will cause you to eat the good of the land. So I was always willing to only go to where God wants me to go. Sing only what God wants me to sing, not what people are singing. Not the way they are doing it. Not what they are running after. I run after God. And once I run after God, people run after me. My strength, no other person, the Holy Spirit. No other person physically, my husband. He has always been there for me. He believed in what I'm doing, and so he has been the support. I have had people come in, you know, into the ministry and living. Another said coming in, but the Holy Spirit has been my comforter, my counselor. Keep on looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. I don't look at people. I don't look at people. I don't envy anybody. I don't know who is envying me anyway. But I trust in the Lord who has called me and taken me through the way. He says, I am the way. Follow me. The truth and the life. I have never deviated from the way. I'm going in the way of righteousness, in the way that God is, you know, permitting me to go to. And I preach the truth. I partners, supporters. People who have been partnering with me for the past 40 years, they are still there. Supporting me with their money. They don't go out with me. They don't travel with me, whether abroad, locally, or nationally, or internationally. They don't travel with me, but they put down their money. Such people are still there. So, uh, if, if, I, if I'm really answering your question, the encouragement has come from God. When I obey Him, my husband, and then people. And I find encouragement in the kind of people who work with me. Who served with me, who are serving God with me, they are not working under me. We are all, all working under God. So I thank God for people. I thank God for God. And I thank God for my husband. Grace. Mm, I'm not omnipotent. I'm not omnipresent. I'm not omniscient. Only God. But grace, His grace has been sufficient. When I'm at home, marriage. When I'm outside in the field, minister. I'm not evangelist, don't show it at home. I am mommy. I am wife. I am sister. I am in-law to in-laws. In-law, our in-law, eh? our daughter, that kind of a thing. But on the road, in the field, I am a minister. Evangelist, not doctor. I'm evangelist, don't show it by the grace of God. Everybody has his own reason for doing what you're doing and you will give account one day. My advice is this, 
Let me tell you mine. When God called me, specifically instructed me, never you charge. This thing you are doing, I have given it to you freely. You see, salvation is not cheap, but it is free. Just like knowledge. Nobody gets knowledge without paying anything for it. I don't want to blame people who are going outside now to be charging because of the gospel. I want to ask, if your pastor is going out to preach, how much does he charge? When Jesus Christ was doing it, our master who called us, how much did he charge the people? I have discovered in the scriptures that when he was sending them out, I give you power. He gave them the power of the Holy Spirit. Then he warned them, don't take two coats, don't take shoes, don't take money. Whenever you get to, wherever you get to, whatever they give to you, take from them. Uh, to survive, how to make it ends meet. It's not ministry. Ministry is sacrifice. It's a calling of honor, but you have to die to self. You will need to know what you are up to. It's like you are selling the gospel, and we are not supposed to sell the gospel. We are to preach the gospel. If I'm leaving my zone to another place, people inviting me should know that they need to appreciate me. A lot of people measure their lifestyle with the honorarium they will collect from people. I want to beg people. I don't believe in it. Suppose I charge a church to come and give me 100 and red naira, and they can afford to give me 1,000. And it has happened in time past. There are places I don't open my mouth, whether locally, I've been to Ghana for a whole month. I didn't charge the churches. I've been abroad, I have never charged anybody. I've been to churches that are made with touch roofs, and I've been to cathedrals that are made with marbles. You don't have to, because of the size of the church or their standard, begin to charge. It is not good the way I see it. But like I said, if God has said it to me, he may not say it to you. There's always a beginning, and the beginning might be little or rough. Endurance, patience, discover who you are and what exactly he has called you to do. You cannot be everywhere, and you cannot be everything. And so I want to encourage the upcoming ones, to stay focused on their calling. If you are called, he will choose you to do whatever he wants you to do. So follow the Lord, instructions, not the world. Because it's gospel, you must be different from what they are doing in the world. Secular music is different from spiritual music. Secular music, you talk about industry, you talk about money, you talk about, you know, fame. But you see, greatness, he wants to make us to be great when it comes to soul winning. How many souls have you won with whatever you are singing, whatever you are doing? That is just it. I don't look for fans, I look for converts. A lot of people are looking for fans. Because by the time another person comes up, they will drop you, they will no longer be your fan. They will move to another person. And uh, it will look as if uh, you are no longer relevant. No, everybody is relevant as long as you maintain your lane. I maintain my lane, I know what God has called me to do and I'm still doing it. So I plead with you, discover who you are, what he has caused you to do, fulfill your ministry under the fear of the Lord, and God is going to take you there. I am Evangelist Mrs. Stone Shewetan of the Trinity World Evangelical Ministry and the proprietress of Pathfinder College Evangelical. All over the world today there is unrest, there is commotion, pandemic or no pandemic, I want to let you know. Don't panic because Yere, 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 oh, Lord of Jesus, Yere, Harami, oh, Wagmatolua, Tebi Tara, oh, Esumobi Moni, oh, Lale Peju. Ma shega para ore jowo o wa gba iye sinu aye re don't be afraid fear not god is with you he's my darling he's the only one 
to save me and I love him. Darling Jesus, darling Jesus, oh my darling Jesus, you are a wonderful papa. I love you so much, darling Jesus. Oh my darling Jesus, you are a wonderful God. Keep watching one on one with champions on Ogogo TV here in Nevada. God bless you real good as you move forward. Welcome back. I know you must have learned one or two things from this interview. Uh, to become a champion, like she said, you must discover who you are and follow on that pace without looking at other people. Don't be a copycat. Look at what God had given you as a vision and follow through it. Definitely you will become a champion. Don't forget that this is our program, our one-on-one -on -one with champions, and I'm your host, Esson Yekunle. See you next time. Courage is the backbone of champions. God bless you. One on one with the great champion. We told you only a song. You will be blessed, you will be inspired. And you stand to be a great champion. I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing to generation. I've been given the power. I've been given the power to rule. I am a king, I'm not a sad.